Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Card is Going to the Change. That's right, AIW's very own podcast. And my name is Alex Worldwide Keller, and I just want to tell you all about one of our great sponsors. That's right, Pollyanna DIY, PollyannaDIY.com, at PollyannaDIY on Twitter, Instagram, and etc. And what Pollyanna DIY has to offer you, they have excellent original wrestling enamel pins, shirts, including the Extreme Roots 91 t-shirt. Checking my hair right now. I have some medium roots. Take care of that in a bit. That's right. They have it all. And wrestling promoters and wrestlers, if you're looking to get into the enamel pin game or t-shirts, Pollyanna DIY wants to hook it up. Now let's take it to the show. The reason you hit download, the card is going to change. Hello once again, everybody. Thanks for listening to AIW's The Card is Going to Change. Before we get into this week's episode, as always, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors that help us bring the show to you for free each and every week. Firstly, thanks to Angelo's Pizza. They're feeding us here as they always do while we record, and they, of course, bring pizza to you at our live events at Mount Carmel. If you want to try more of their pizza or anything else on their menu, it's all delicious. Head to Angelo's on Madison Avenue in Lakewood, Ohio. And thanks to Smart Mark Video, they record all of our live events. And if you want to relive any of those or watch them for the first time, you can purchase that on DVD or digital download from smartmarkvideo.com. And additionally, head to powerbomb.tv, sign up using the code ABSOLUTE, and you will get a 20-day trial for free. And then stick around and just keep watching the shows that we put out there from the AIW archives. And as always, thanks to Jack Prince, who helps take care of all of our printing and graphic design needs. They can do all of that and more for you, whether it be banners, t-shirts, business cards, flyers, everything and anything. For all that they have to offer, head to jackprince.com. J-A-K Prince.com. And that voice that you heard is going to throw me off a little bit, because usually I say it at the end. But none other than AIW owner John Thorne. He, of course, as always, is on this episode, and we are also joined by a whole contingent of people. We've got Alex Worldwide Keller. Worldwide. Wes Barkley. Yo. Marino. Hey, yo. Philly Collins. Hello. President Matt Wadsworth. It's a whole contingency going on in here. <laughs> and do I even say? Hell yeah. <laughs> Dave the Potato. Referee extraordinaire. <laughs> extraordinaire. Extraordinaire. Yes, Calm down. I hate this episode already. <laughs> May, you know, a podcast with David the Potato might be all right if he has to do very little talking. That's it's why not, I'm holding the mic. He's not hy- centered around him. He's hyperventilating already. Look at him. Yeah. You'll notice that I didn't let him hold the mic. That was a good call. Good call on your point. True broadcast professional. You always hold the mic. Yes. So uh, on this episode, we are talking Wrestle Rager 3. A.K.A. Deathmatch Jamboree, but not say really. <laughs> but also, if you looked at the promotional signage provided by Paps, we had... Uh, I did see now that. Now that's Class 4. I did see that. So that was like, on that's the a side. worldwide thing. This world has actually. been trying to get that going for two years. Now, I'm just saying. I'm not trying to get a Class 4 going on. We had one in the main event, brother. <laughs> well, sort of. I don't know. I feel like yeah. I feel like the most of those two teams yeah. are in the same class. Only one uh, person is in other a different than Duke social Buddy, class. I think <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're all about that same even level. Yeah, yeah but the people the on Duke Money Inc. were all class traders. That, so. That's fair. They're getting they're getting paid, getting those dollars. So, uh, I mean, I don't know where to begin. We, you know, should we, we talk about how Sabu didn't want to wrestle? Uh, I don't know if we'll start there. Let's let's first talk about how. Wrestle Rager 2 was such a success that there were talks that maybe that was going to be a one-off because we didn't know how good it was going to be. How soon after that do you think we had the conversation like, oh, yeah, this is happening again? Uh, Worldwide had it the next day. 
I mean, class was very happy with it. We were I mean, we talked about it a little bit on the preview episode, but yeah, uh, it was a ongoing um, a dialogue, I will say. Now, one thing that we talked about on the preview episode was checking the old farmer's almanac. Yeah, and that weather gave was giving me a heart attack. Well, it was giving all of us heart attacks all week long. I would say the whole about a week and a half leading up, we were all checking the the forecasts. And then everyone's and doing keeping the updated. Everyone's doing the. Uh, well, you know, it I doesn't heard, matter until two days. It out. doesn't. Yeah, the, the, you can't really predict the <laughs> weather until two, two days, days out. It says we're going to be fucked from three o'clock on. Yeah, and then this and that, and then finally, like at like nine a.m. the day of, it's it, like it, it's, it all said we're going to be really fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like oh, it's going to rain really the, bad from like. It, it got to a 90% chance of yeah, rain. A day out, it said we were going to be great. It said some rain in the morning and then rain at night. My favorite part the day before was on Friday, and there was a moment where, like, at some hour, there was a 20% chance of rain. And Thorne was like, well, what the fuck? I just got caught in the same chance, percentage chance, as rain's supposed to be tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And it's a torrential town. It was only four. supposed to be 20%. <laughs> and I got bored on. We're fucked. <laughs> Twice. That was exactly what he said. <laughs> Twice in the same day. Uh, I was leaving, like... It twenty percent chance of rain. I walk out of work. It is a full on monsoon. Cannot protect yourself at all. Like torrential <laughs> downpour. Can't even see one foot in front of you. And then I got home. It cleared up. I go. I go to the store. I come out. Same fucking thing. Uh, it rained on twice again. And I said, "This is a bad omen for Russell Rager this weekend." I know that we're fucked. Uh, just like the weather is saying, we're going to be fucked. I mean, it was to the point of day out that I was like, all right, it says it's supposed to start raining at like 7 o'clock, so let's try to get Sabu and PCO out early so at least we can get that on before the rain hits. Right. And I had all types of people messaging me, and I'm sure everyone else did. What happens if it rains? I'm like, we already sold the tickets, rain or shine, something's happening. Yeah. Oh, is uh, I made so many no refund signs that were hung up. <laughs> a lot of those. <laughs> all over. All over the fucking venue. Oh, yeah, didn't you edit the... Uh... And it also said, we are not liable if you get struck by lightning. <laughs> yes, we had that, too. And, and you were you're, you're entering this event. That was your me in the office chat. I was, uh... Uh, did, uh, did anybody in this room, were any of you guys willing to uh, go through with it, even if it was oh, hell out yeah. there? Oh, I think everybody... I was yeah. going to be really bummed out if I was like... If the rain was taking all my color away, but yeah. I think I think everybody would have been willing to wrestle, but uh, Sabu probably, who was uh, who didn't want to wrestle didn't want when it's sunny out. So, all right, let's get into that. But, uh, no, we'll get into that in a minute. Right. But uh, uh, so I imagine my- PCO might hesitate, considering oh. part part. Well, the only here's the only reason I say that because a big part of what he does is being hooked up to a live car battery. I would right. imagine in the rain you're going to hesitate with that. Uh, and uh, my only other concern was the girls, which Britt Baker texted me like early in the morning was like, what are you going to do if it rains? I said, I don't know. She goes, I'll wrestle in the rain. I don't fucking care. So I was like, oh, okay. So that's one person I don't have to worry about. You yeah. know, sure. Alley cat's down. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this is also is what leads me to decide that I'm going to participate in the main event because uh, I was not going to do it, much uh, to the dismay of wor- the <laughs> Weird World and PME, who had been asking me uh, for. I know Worldwide had been asking me for about three months, but uh, I was at. I was firmly against it uh, until uh, it got about eight o'clock at night on Friday, and we're going back and forth, and uh, you know the the chat concerning the weather and how bad it is looking for the day before. And I go, well, I, I, I swear to God, this is like the most basic white bitch thing I could ever say. I was in target, got myself a venti mocha, started walking around and, uh, that caffeine started hitting me. And I went, you know what? So I guess if it rains, the only way to make sure people are happy is if I fucking finally get my hands on the Duke. Yeah. So, uh, I went home, I found my wrestling gear, and I sent Worldwide a picture of my boots, and I said, I'm in. And uh, that was, that was, that was, the the main decision, though, is because I knew that I would wrestle in the rain. I didn't know if anybody else would wrestle in the rain. And I know the fucking Duke will wrestle at any time that he is allowed to wrestle. Uh, So that was the main, the weather was what really made my decision. And, And we did get some rain 
uh, right until we opened up doors, maybe? Uh, a little bit before. An hour it before? stopped about an hour before. Yeah, it was about an hour out from doors. Yeah, it was looking ugly all day, like just overcast as hell, like ready to drip at any minute. And then, like, around, like, and to the point that we didn't even want to put the ropes up until, like, the show was about we're, to start. And, like, we're, uh, you know, Wadsworth lives two streets over from me, and uh, it looked real bad when I, when I woke up in the morning. Uh, so I was like, fuck, this is bad. And then, uh, I started driving into Lakewood closer to now that's class and it got sunny. So I was like, oh, okay. You know, it's not that bad, you know, but then it eventually got not sunny by now that's class about an hour and a half before we were going to open doors. And it, it just started, it started raining and, uh, so many motherfuckers were downloading Doppler radar applications onto their <laughs> iPhones. <laughs> trying, Pulling up the radar. Trying, trying to be meteorologists to figure out how long this is going to last. And then lo and behold, we opened doors at 3.30, the sun came out, and we were fine until 8 o'clock. I could not believe it. I was not downloading Doppler radar. I was busy downloading music all day because we didn't have Traxler. Yeah, and, uh, well, I had a Doppler radar going, and I didn't I understand it. I, that's how I found out that John Thorne was Chris going Sanka to was, wrestle. Or Kristen Nick Sanka was giving you the report. Yeah. I find out John Thorne's going to wrestle because we get the uh, the old group chat. Better download 99 Problems. I was like, oh. Well, right. see, I don't think that was in the... No, I sent you that text. I'm going to say that wasn't in the main oh, okay. because I, I figured we wouldn't get I into this remember. later. I never even actually officially found out. Like By the time the match happened, I knew. But that's because I just heard John was just... Talking very matter of factly about, yeah, when I come out and blah, blah and that was the first I heard of it. So yeah, that, I kept it very, I kept it very under wraps. Yeah, uh, even the opponents did not know. Uh, I, I told, I told Weird World PME, and uh, I told Steve Guy the day of, and you didn't even tell Nick Sanka. Yeah, not until I said when to play my music, which yeah. after the show started, because I'm, and. And I found that out because he's looking at all the music I have listed on my thumb drive. And uh, he goes, 99 Problems? What's that on there for? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, Thorne said I got to have it. <laughs> and I just dropped my shoulder and I left it at that. I was like, oh, he'll tell you if he needs it. <laughs> we'll go from there. Yeah, I mean, it was just, you, you got to blame the Starbucks Venti Mocha, I think, and the Farmer's Almanac uh, weather predictions because... Uh, I don't know. I was it on the caffeine. I was. I, I got all hyped up in that caffeine, and I was feeling some kind of way. And I said, "All right, I'm in." What's the weird world experience thinking when they find this out? We were pumped. I mean, uh, one more body on the fire, you know? Yeah, raging in the class war. Oh yeah. What about what about you guys? Well, PME there. Oh, every rose needed is John Thorne. That's what I need. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite post so far after Wrestle Ranger. <laughs> Oh, we just knew we needed the passion. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't need it. <laughs> I'll tell you that. You, you needed a venti. Yeah, Mocha. but I mean, I figured, fuck it. You know what I mean? Uh, let's do it. It was, uh, we were primed, we were ready to go, and then... Uh, well, then... Uh, our special guest gets there. Potatoes, little lackey, Peyton, Peyton Vance, comes in and he says, Hey, Sabu's going home. I said, what? He says, he's not coming. He <laughs> says, he's not going to wrestle. Uh, and I guess uh, we can give the mic to the potato and he can explain his interactions with Sabu. Yeah, before we get into the pulling in the parking lot, uh, you walk up to me as I'm walking in the building and you go, Hey man, you're going to have to pick up Sabu. Of course, that's fine, no problem. I look at Peyton, I'm like, yo Vance, you're coming with me. Because there is no way I'm going to be in the car solo with Sabu. Absolutely what are you, not. What are you well, Super Genie was going to be there. You have Super Genie with him. I mean, I get that. You don't want to be too crowded in there. I, I, to answer your question, I'm now driving a Chrysler Town & Country. Oh, okay. Plenty yeah, it's of a space. van. Plenty yep. of space. Lots of space. Uh, it's an 08. You know, I'm a dad might. now. So let me just throw that out there. Uh, but yeah, so I text Sabu and I said, Hey, man, uh, this is referee Dave. And I'm going to be picking you up here within the hour. Way to be specific. You could have just said <laughs> That's Dave. Why he was mad. That's how I kind of do it with all the guys. I did with, uh, you know, I did with Jarrett. I did with Arn, you know. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> happy birthday. Happy so birthday. I, uh, happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, happy birthday. Arn, our birthdays is coming up real soon. I'll send him this episode. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I'll let him know you said what's up, WES. Uh, so yeah. Um, he doesn't respond. 
Okay. And I'm just like, uh, maybe we should just head to the hotel because maybe he'll just be ready and tell me he's outside. Uh, we head to the hotel and uh, still no text. And uh, this is probably 15 minutes waiting outside the hotel and I finally get one. Hey, man, are there uh, locker rooms? And nope. Are there dressing rooms? Nope. Are there showers? Nope. All right, well, me and uh, Jeannie are going to get ready in the hotel, and uh, we'll see you in about an hour. I'm like, oh, well, fuck, what do I got to do for an hour? So uh, me and Vance head to Mark's, do some shopping. Not really good shopping. Produce, you know. And uh, (laughs) I finally get the text. Hey, man, I'll be out in 15. All right, so I turn around. We go back to the hotel, and out comes Sabu and Jeannie, full in gear. (laughs) What are you thinking there? I'm thinking, holy shit. This guy really got ready, and, uh, you know, he's ready to rock and roll when we get to the venue. So he gets in the van, and uh, Jeannie goes, uh, hey, we, you know, we could stop and get some coffee? So yeah, where, where would you like? We got Dunkin', we got Starbucks. He goes, uh, McDonald's. All right, no problem. I know where that is. I know the area pretty well. Loves the McCafe, huh? Yeah, they actually did get a McCafe, and I took total advantage of that because I got the McDonald's app on my phone. So I got the little punch card. So when I get five, I get a free one. Oh, yeah. Fucking right. of yeah. course he did. Oh, you, of course. Did you use what the, a loser. Wait, did you, use, did you get punched for their coffee or did you splurge and use the free one on them? Uh, no, I got the fourth punch. There was my fourth punch. <laughs> we'll get to the fifth punch later because we had to stop at McDonald's on the way back. But anyway, oh. uh, as we're in the McDonald's mm. drive through we're seeing a little sprinkle, sprinkle. And uh, Sabu goes, is it supposed to rain? And I, uh, I brought up the uh, Farmer's Almanac. Oh. <laughs> and I said, uh, Farmer's Almanac said like 10%. So this is probably all we're getting. And he goes, well, I hope so, because I'm not wrestling in the rain. And, at, what, uh, at, what, at what point did he know it was outside? Well, I uh, well, uh, kind of skipped over that part. I, uh, I told him that it was an outdoor show okay. uh, after he you know, found out there was no dressing rooms, locker rooms, or showers. Um, he was kind of questioning that. At first, and I said, no, man, it's cool. Uh, we did the same thing last year. Your buddy Sandman was here. Your buddy? Yes. Are they I buddies? Your buddy. Are they buddies? Uh, he said he hasn't talked to him in a couple years. <laughs> 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 I don't know. <laughs> they might not be buddies anymore. Shout out to the Sandman. Uh, but yeah, so after we get the coffee, I, uh, I took the scenic route. I, I was, uh, was going to kind of, you know. Feeling him out? Yeah, really, really feeling him out. From the uh, first time we had him at AIW, uh, he was, uh, wasn't really the nicest guy, but that's anyway. Um, so we, we pull down the road, the side street where the back lot is, uh, where the U-Haul was, and um, I pull into the parking lot where the apartments are right next door. And uh, he looks, he said, where the fuck's the ring at? And I said, it's, it's right there. And I kind of pointed over the fence. And he goes, holy shit, you didn't tell me you guys fucking ran a backyard promotion. And I was like, oh boy. This is definitely not the turn I wanted to take. And I said, well, Sabu, it's not a, a backyard show. It's, it's a little spot show that we do once. This is the second one we did. You know, this is, it's fun. It's cool. Did you, you know? tell him it's a bar? Yeah, I told him it was a bar. I said, look at all the, you know, the Bud Light logos all over the place. And Jeannie is trying to save this conversation. PBR, She's like, brother. yeah, it's, uh, it's, look at the sponsors. You know, there's Bud Light and, and, and PBR. And, and there's, it's like an establishment. And uh, he goes, I am not bumping. Fuck this shit. I am not breaking my back on a concrete floor in someone's goddamn backyard. Because he, like, th- he couldn't see the ring, right? Well, he saw the turnbuckles. Oh. The top turnbuckles. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm deathly scared. I look at Peyton and I'm just like, dude, go find Thorne immediately. So he gets out of the van. He apparently found you. And uh, Sabu starts getting out of the car and he goes, what the fuck is this? Uh, what is this? What is this? And uh, I'm maybe 50 feet ahead of him i'm by the u-haul truck and i hear him go hey open up your van take me back to the hotel and genie is trying to calm him down and he just i hit the unlock button he fucking manhandles my latch open takes his bags now if he took his bags and threw them at a window the glass would go because that's how hard he threw them he was pissed and he's just like i'm not doing this i'm not breaking my back in a backyard and genie is trying to reconcile and it's it's a venue it's it's you know, as a as professional establishment and this, that, and the other. And uh, he gets in the van. He goes, Jeannie, you're either coming with us or you're not. He's ready to leave her. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, my God. Well, okay. She gets in the car. I'm just like, all right. So we back up, start going down. Uh, what is that? Detroit Avenue, where West 17th is, where that yep. Pizza Hut is. And uh, I turn the corner. 
And he looks at me and he goes, I'm a fucking professional. Turn around. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, are you sure? And he goes, yeah. I ain't bumping, though. I ain't bumping. And then he says, I don't know how Pierre could want to wrestle for something like this. Talking about PCO. Yeah. We pull into the Pizza Hut. I do a little Yui. We get back in the in the parking lot, and he goes. At that point, you guys had to drive by the line of the people, right? Yeah, he didn't yeah. care about that. He did not care about that. Even Jeannie was like, "Look, there's people. There's people." He's like, "Yeah, backyard shows can draw 52." <laughs> and uh, we we pull back in, and he goes, "Find me the booger. Find me the booger." And that's when I go 110 miles an hour to find you. I'm screaming. I'm waving my arms in the air. Acting like an idiot, and yeah. uh, I find you, and I go, "Hey, Thorn Sabu, Sabu Thorn, see you later." He starts yelling at me. Oh my god! And uh, he goes, "How do you make money?" I said, "I sold three hundred tickets." And he goes, "How do you make money here?" I go, "It's a bar. They, I'm being paid by a sponsor, and I sold three hundred tickets." And he goes, "Is there even a dressing room?" And I said, "I can get you one." He goes, "Show me, show me right now." So I wish I knew that before I picked them up. So. I uh, I took him into the concert space. Now that's class, and uh, me and me and Pedro are like, you know, what do you need? This and that, and uh, he needed to see PME is what he needed, and uh, <laughs> and get a coffee, and then uh, after that, you know, I, I think he calmed down, and they got him out for the meet and greet. And I think once he saw that there was a fucking shit ton of people there, uh, he kind of lightened up, I guess. When you told me to get the chair signed, and I'm waiting there, waiting for him to come out so he can sign the chairs, it was maybe 10, 15 minutes go by. I did not think he was coming out. Yeah. I was worried. That's when uh, PME had to come in there and talk to old PME saved Sabu. the day. So Thorne comes running up to us. Well, me. Was like, hey, you should go talk to Sabu. And I'm like, what do you, what do you mean go talk to Sabu? He's like, just go talk to Sabu. So I go over to Marino and we whisper to each other and uh, I go to, I tell Marino go hit the hit the car. So I uh, go to talk to Sabu and he's pacing like a tiger in this in this room. I was like, hey, uh, hey, Sabu. He's like, what do you want? I was like, uh, my name is Philly Collins. Uh, I'm a, I'm a wrestler here. Uh, my, my my tag partner said you uh, we're gonna get you some good times and good vibes. So uh, why don't you just remain calm? And we'll uh, we'll just uh, so me and Marino and Sabu are hanging out in this little room, and then next thing you know, Sabu changes his whole mood of uh, coming to coming to the AIW. You guys <laughs> so, are passing around the good vibes, huh? Oh yeah, the very good vibes. <laughs> and then I thought I'd never see the day where I stood in a, a woman a woman's restroom with Sabu and Marino. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I'm done with wrestling. I think this is uh, this is it. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, and then so he he lightens up when he's talking to you guys. Oh, he lightened up a lot after t- talking to us because I was just like, you know, uh, this can't be the worst show you ever been to. He's like, no, nah, you're right. I went to this other show in California, in the middle of a food court of a casino. <laughs> I'm wrestling, and this guy takes a picture and sends it to me. And a Denny's logo illuminating over my shoulder, and that's the only thing you could tell that was me. I was like, oh, well. All right, and then he started going on telling us stories about terrible wrestling places. I was like, none of those sounded like anything like this. I was like, it's it's just a bar did there, you, Sabu. Did you tell him about the blow up doll from last year? No, I, I Sally didn't come up in. <laughs> oh, in I, didn't, I, I I I thought if I brought up that, maybe you'd just be like, all right, get out. But uh, <laughs> but you know what really broke the ice? Uh, Pedro comes I think in. I do. But uh, Pedro comes in. He's like, "Hey, well, uh, Sabu, what kind of coffee do you like?" He's like, "Black." And I was like, "Like my women." And he, we both started laughing. And then next thing you know, that's what broke the ice, right there. It was wow. it was coffee lingo? And <laughs> Philly, Col- yeah. Philly Collins' fascination with uh, chocolate. Yeah, he was like, it was a- <laughs> um, more levels than one. It was like now a- we know why he's a biggins guy. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> It yeah. was a it was a very heated exchange with us though, and like I kind of stood my ground, and then like I gave like everything he like asked for, he got, and then I think he like calmed down immensely when it was like a professional like organization, you know, even though it was at an outdoor bar. Yeah, I just had to tell him it was just like it's not, it, this ain't a backyard. It looks like it's a backyard, but that's the way the bar is. I'm like, just wait until these people come in to see you. And he ripped that door open, did this, did his point, and next thing you know, the place <laughs> erupted. And I was like, I'm looking at Marino. I'm like, 
all right, dude, I'm done. We walk outside, everybody's looking, just give the thumbs up, and we're on the road, ladies and gents. <laughs> Meanwhile, a story of a study of contrasts, if you would. PCO showed up. The front door was locked by that point, so there was just that side gate, which was locked. Somebody's like, I think that's PCO and Destro over there. So I walk over, I gimmick the gate open, and shake PCO's hand, shake Destro's hand. PCO's like, where's the locker room? And I'm like, behind the U-Haul. He's like, outside? And I'm like, yeah, outside. He's like, okay. <laughs> and off he went. <laughs> and I forgot, I forgot that PCO, the last time we had him, was the show yeah, that there. you were in the hospital. Yeah, which was crazy because he walked right up to me. I would never met him, and he goes, how's your health, man? <laughs> but, but here's the thing. He didn't at first. He walked up to me. I went over. I said, hey, good to see you again, man. He goes, uh, John? Yeah, and yeah. I said, no, no, I'm not. I said, he's, uh, he's right over there with the hat on. Yeah, he, he walked right up to me, and uh, he was like, how's your health? He, we made some small talk. I met Destro. Yeah. Uh, who, man, a few words, Destro. Does not talk much. Destro's, <laughs> Destro's my dude. I just got to get that out there. He was giving me top secret diet tips. So he, maybe later we'll talk about it. He but looks like no, a what's 60 year old weird body. What's the tip? I'll That's give you one. I'll give you one. Me and him were, we were bullshitting a little bit before, and uh, I was getting some weird eyes from everyone backstage. And, you know, he was giving me some secrets. But one of the secrets. He had that I black drop, tongue going. He had the black tongue out. And I go, you know, I need some diet tips and whatnot. And he. He said, eat oatmeal before you go to bed. And I'm like, I always hear the protein. He's like, oatmeal. And then he started flexing. He just started flexing. He goes, you get like me. I'm like, all right, man. So I do not question Destro. I started a day after, so I've been on it. I'm trying to, you know, I think I look a little bigger. But who <laughs> yeah. knows? Uh, they, they're great. I mean, they were great to talk to. And, you know, I walked up to PCO. He's like, hey, how are you? And I'm like, oh, I'm good. Thanks. And, uh, and I was like. Trying to get the information. I'm like, how do you want me to do this? Right. I was just, well, I don't know. And yeah, he was. If it rains, we, you know, I can't do the battery and no Destro. I'm like, oh, all right. Yeah. He was, but he was, PCO was down for anything. Yeah. And, uh, he, you know, I, I explained to him that Sabu was in kind of a crabby mood. Yeah, that's what he was, he was kind of uh, saying to me. I found out from PCO that Sabu was in a crabby mood. And uh, he goes, ah, you know, and we kind of know each other. So, like, I had to, like, it, we made Sabu this makeshift private locker room, and then, uh, you know, uh, I sent, you know, the guys over to talk to him that he was wrestling or whatever, and then uh, I guess, you know, he was he was cool after that, and uh, I had really no interaction with him after our first, like, uh, kind of yelling at each other, and then uh, when they were, like, figuring out the match, I came in, and I was like, do you guys need anything? And they told me, like, they needed... You know, he wanted three chairs or whatever, and I said, okay, you know, they'll be there. And then uh, after the fact, uh, you know, I didn't know what what his feelings were. You know, he ended up working hard. Uh, yeah. He took some. He took bumps, unlike uh, what he told Dave the Potato, I believe. But uh, yeah, and there was a whole a catching of Matt Justice. Right, but uh, you know, I ended up texting him because I didn't see him after he left or whatever. And I said, hey, you know, I just want to let you know that uh, your hotel has a uh, has a shuttle so you can get to the airport. Because I was kind of, I still kind of pissed off about his, like, a- overall attitude. Yeah, because, I mean, even after the show, when I was talking to you, we were we were talking about it. And still, we're, we're not thrilled with Sabu. Well, he kind of, like, bailed right after that match. I know that he was no, hurting. He was, he, no, he was there. Well, no, he no, was I mean, there like, through the main like event. When, when the match ended, he kind of just... Stormed right back to the yeah. You know, there was, was no opportunity for a crowd. He's like a please I, come back or anything. Oh no, I saw I saw a picture of Sabu just watching uh, the AW main event <laughs> just from looking, behind a truck. Yeah, just like in just looking so confused at the whole situation. Yeah. I know he was in pain at one point because they were brawling through the crowd and everybody's going around the rails or like you know like over the rails yeah. and I'm kind of keeping the crowd back and I look and he was there. And he was like holding on. I think it was his hip or his leg or something. He's got a he new just, hip. He yeah, does, and he yeah, gave me the like the wave off. Like, nah, I'm not. I don't want to climb over that. And he just walked around. I was like, eh, okay, so I mean, he may have just been that he wasn't hanging out there because at that point he was just hurting. But uh, you know, I, just, I I told him about the thing, and uh, he wrote me a a very uh, a very nice apology about how he overreacted uh, and overanalyzed the situation before. Uh, you know, figuring out what it was, and he said it turned out to be a great experience. Did he say anything about the experience? 
not, no, not specifically. Not. Not, not that experience, no. No, I mean, I just wanted to throw in, too, that we definitely had upwards of 300 people there. Oh, you know what I mean? Oh, so it's sure. like, I'd when he's coming in thinking at it, I was like, this is this is huge. You know, so when he's seeing the backyard and everything, I was like, this place is going to be wild. This is going to be packed. This is the biggest party of the summer. So. Our, well, our pre-sale, yeah, I was going to say. In our, well, the pre-sale is what occurred to me, and if you've listened to the, the podcast for any amount of time, you've heard the story of of Athens of Westfest down in OU a couple times and it's so funny because at the time I remember we were you've talked about we were scared to bring honky tonk man there cuz what's he going to think when he gets there yeah. you know the curtains just set up in a driveway it's some dude's backyard and he was completely cool with it meanwhile what is a fully professional production at a bar and Sabu has the exact reaction we were afraid the honky tonk man was going and, and to I, in heaven. And I know Sabu has wrestled in way worse places, you know, throughout the yeah. years. You know what I mean? And like, uh, pr- probably half of them produced by ECW. You know what I mean? So like, Sandman was cool with it last year. He didn't care. You know, he was just practicing his golf swing in the fucking middle of the road <laughs> last year. But uh, you know, I was kind of shocked. But also, you know. Maybe he was crabby because he had to take a red eye in because the show was in the afternoon. You know what I mean? Maybe he's just uh, he's tired. Uh, just also crabby that, you know, like I talked to Matt Justice about this and I said, you know, it's got to be kind of hard knowing that at one time you were probably the most influential wrestler in the world and time and, and just, you know, uh, everything else is caught up to you and you can't. You can't live up to what you were anymore. I said that's pro- that probably weighs on him mentally uh, more than any of us could realize. But I was like, he still didn't have to be so reactionary like that. But uh, I don't I, I don't hate Sabu because he apologized within you know uh, a good amount of time. I uh, he also uh, apologized several times on the way back. Oh yeah, let's uh, well before we get into it, let's talk about the let's talk about your interaction on the way back with with him because let's get the flip side of it all. Well. Uh, I'm supposed to rough the main, but I, I get a text saying that he was ready. I'm not really ready because I didn't get the text until the show was over with. But I look over, and he's kind of maneuvering his hand like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And I'm like, oh, shit, this guy wants to go. So I uh, find Vance. We grab the van, turn it around. Is this why Hornswoggle the- wound up being a referee? Yes. Yes, he uh, Hornswoggle kicked me and took my rough shirt. And uh, it was not, yeah. It wasn't because of Sabu. You were going to rough it. You were going to make Sabu wait. I mean, essentially, that's my name was on the ref card for the main, so your I got to do was, my job. Because you put it there. <laughs> <laughs> I did not put it there. Your name was on the marquee, huh? We'll it there was. Later. Anyway, uh, so we get in the van, and uh, I'm trying to have as little conversations as possible, uh, seeing as that the car ride there was not pleasant. Uh, but on the way up the road, uh, Jeannie says, you know, that show was really good. And uh, Sabu was like, uh, well, yeah, I... Uh, I'm sorry for reacting the way that I did. And I'm just like, no, man, it's cool. I mean, I get it. You know, you've been around for, you know, 20, 30 years, so it, it's it's totally okay. I, I get it. You know, you are you pull up to a, a fenced-in yard, and you see a bunch of logos, and you see a top turnbuckle over the fence. And, uh, I mean, I would probably think the same thing if I was around for that long. It's, it's okay. And uh, when we got to McDonald's, he apologized again, and uh, I used another punch on the... Uh, <laughs> On a, on a latte there. On so you got a free one coming. Yeah, I got a free one. My next one, probably Thanks on the way home from. Yes, thank you, Sabu, for you the uh, bitch. free frappe there. And uh, when we got to the hotel, he apologized again. And then, uh, you know, I sh- shook hands, was made he, friends. Was he asking what the regular shows were like and stuff? Yeah, yeah, he did ask. Um, he did ask uh, what the regular shows were like because um, he was. He was familiar with when he was there. What was that? Absolution Seven. Six, I think. Six. Um, I told him that we don't have that venue anymore and the venue that we have is like twice the size and he would it seemed like he was really hinting as to you Want know, another date hey you know talk to the booker man yeah uh and i was like yeah man the shows that we normally draw the building can hold i think it can hold up to 900 to 1000 people oh i don't know uh, that you don't think so no well i told him we that get crowded, so. <laughs> dude, we get crowded we have 500 yeah, that's all right i told him that anyway so <laughs> what johnny show we had like 6 700 and that was tight yeah, you, uh, setup, though. you know, that's up to the uh, the office if uh, he comes back. It's up to the board. The board. Yeah, I mean, I don't hate. I, I don't hate him. I hate. I hated him when we were having our conversation. I was like, "Fuck this guy, dude." I totally was not happy with my conversation with him either. Uh, but then he lightened up, and then you know, 
uh, the guys, you know, PCO and Matt Justice, they said he was, he turned out to be really awesome. The match was sweet. And, uh, you know, he worked hard. Um, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, he definitely turned the corner uh, because I was like, oh, my God. Like, like all the all the things that we were worrying about, the least amount of my worries was Sabu going to be mad that we were wrestling outside at a bar. Like, that was, like, the least of my concerns. Uh, and, man, whew, like, it was right when it got done raining when he was, like, screaming at me. And I was like, fuck. Uh, there were two or three times where I thought we lost Sabu. This is all going on. And, meanwhile, I've been running around like an insane person trying to get shit, like, set up, like, between the bar and the fucking show and this and that and guiding traffic. And then I heard that was happening. And I was like, I don't give a shit. Somebody to deal with that fucking bug off. There might be documentary footage somewhere down the line of me pacing around looking really, really, really mad. I uh, I was very agitated le- leading into the show. I had a conversation with Nasty Russ at the after party, and he had said to me he was hearing all this, that Sebu was in a bad mood and everything. He's like, but, he's like, this is like the most influential wrestler to me in my entire career. Like, this is the guy why I got into pro wrestling. I'm sure there's a million people that feel right, that way. But the way, you know, the way he ends up putting it to me is like, was so poignant. And he's like, I didn't care. I was going to tell this guy, you are the biggest influence, like, in my life when it comes to pro wrestling, me doing what I wanted to do for all this time now. And he's like, so I did. And I shook his hand. And he, you know, he seemed grumpy. And I was like, oh, I like, thank you or whatever. He's like, but for me, it, it didn't matter. That was a million bucks. Like, I, for, I got to tell that person that this was happening. I'm like, oh, that's, that's still a cool thing if that's your mind frame. Meanwhile, Dave the Potato's worried about his produce getting smashed. <laughs> I ate it before I picked him up. He got- oh, okay. He ate it before he picked him up. But we, I mean, we had lines out the door. We've got... It was wild. I was getting a lot of texts from people wondering what was going on with the line. So we didn't let you in. Sorry, folks. It's a smaller place. It takes a little bit longer to get you through those doors and then the bar and then everything. Kudos to the bartending staff. They brought their A-team this year. Last year, if I'm being honest, uh, they had, um, I don't think they had faith in the event, and they didn't have their, they had like maybe their B-minus team on the bar staff. This year, A staff inside, and then like A-minus staff outside. They had a lot to deal with, though. A lot of people. Oh, yeah. Like you're saying, with almost 300 people. From what I understand, that well we, we sold out of We basically sold them out of all Pabst products. Oh, Which they is, had no Bud products? Oh, they were out of, like, just basically, yeah, all cheap or working oh, man beers. All domestic beers. I know th- PBR, Black Label, Colt 45, all gone. How'd the Mad Dogs do? <laughs> oh, Mad Dogs sold big. <laughs> sold. <laughs> yeah, those sold out. Oh, I'm, dude, I'm telling you, I think they sold out of everything because my friend got stuck drinking an Old English or something. <laughs> yeah, it, it, like, it just went down from there. It was like, everybody was like, it was good beer, and then it just, well, all right, here we go. There were there's some Budweiser forty ounces being passed around. Oh, it, 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 people snuck stuff in. They also stole all out of uh, all their well vodkas. That's just disgusting. That's not even that's not even an accomplishment. <laughs> that's, that's the number one selling vodka in the state of Ohio. I will tell you that. I know this. <laughs> no, not that yet. Kamchatka. C- yeah. Uh, so, I mean, the show itself, we can kind of pick. Moments here. We don't have to there. go over the whole thing. We don't thing. have to go over the whole thing because uh, it was a circus. We'll it, say that it really was. What I loved is guys like Gringo Loco who wanted to be a part of it and wrestles in Mexico and all these other places. And then here he is at Wrestle Ranger Three and his reaction, like, "Holy shit, man!" It, it really is. I mean, he's a guy that that wanted on. He approached you, and he he wanted on in the back of what I kept referring to on commentary as almost the urban legend of last year. Right, that last year became. And it lived up to it for him. Like he was staring. He jumped in on commentary with me. He actually did the the Matt Justice PCO Sabu. He said, "You know, I've, I've always wanted to try my hand." I said, I, "Yeah, grab a mic." I was doing matches solo. I didn't care who was up there. Yeah. And he was like, "Man, this is this is the most crazy thing." I mean, this is a guy who's literally wrestled in hole in the walls in Mexico. Right. And he's like, "I've never experienced anything like this atmosphere." This. Uh- Meanwhile, Rex Brody also really wanted to be on it. I don't know if a lot of people know this. That guy wanted to be on Russell Ragers so bad that he had a wedding, a family wedding to attend later on in the day, wrestled, and then went to that instead. Like, um, all of this is fantastic. Then I talked to Swaggle afterwards. He begged to get on it. He begged to get on it, and I go, 
actually, I think it's during the main event while he's refereeing. I go, uh, you having a great time? Best thing I've ever been a part of. Oh, dude, he, no, Swaggle, <laughs> so, because Swaggle called the opening match with me, and he just, he kept going, oh, it's not quite WrestleMania, it's not, and he once kept, everybody he, filtered in. He kept saying that all day, when because he, he was kind of like Sabu in the fact that he was like, like, not serious, but like still kind of half serious maybe, because like, these guys that have had these accomplishments, and he's looking around, and he goes, you know I was on WrestleMania, right? And like because it does kind of look like a backyard because there's two there's a house next to it there's an apartment complex next to it he wasn't the greatest Royal Rumble uh, mm-hmm. and uh, I go you I go just wait man I go you just wait and see what this turns into and you got it I told you so moment because it's that crowd filtered in and like I said he called the first answer he was sitting up there on that that porch with me and he was like I take back the mania comment he's like this is incredible <laughs> what you know what really absolutely did, amazing sets the tone right off the rip from Wrestle Rager starting is cameraman Gary getting a match off, and we have he had like a match and a half off. Cameraman Eddie he was Kingston. pissed about that. He was pissed. <laughs> he still is. Have you seen him and Janet on? All they keep saying when people are like, "Oh, that was great," they're like, "No, it isn't." All his footage sucks. Yeah, yeah that's, they're what, pissed. that's what I was worried about the entire time. They said every time he does that, he doesn't know how to fucking tape properly. I'm like, we're in a six man well, scramble. I had to keep telling him, like, Eddie, you need to go over here. You need to catch this. It's a six-man scramble. There's a lot going on, dude. That you gotta... Guys are coming out in their entrances. Eddie, you got to get this guy's entrance. The hard camp can't reach it from where it is. <laughs> he just worried about lighting up his cigarette while he's while he's doing his Newports. We... So, and Thorne, I know you asked about how you ended up with Swaggle and the main man. So the groundwork from that was actually originally laid after the first match. Oh, okay. So after yeah. the first match, like I said, Swaggle did commentary with me, and he goes, uh, when are the girls on? He said, the girls, I said, I think the first half, and then Steve Guy announces it. Their second, I was yeah. like, there you go, they're, they're the second match. And he's like, oh, and he goes, I should go take Potato Shirt, I should, ref, I should have ref this match. <laughs> so he brings it up then, that's the end of it, obviously he didn't, you know. So then we get to the main event, and it's a sellout on that deck. I mean, it is just so many bodies on that thing. So many bodies that Dr. Dan later breaks it. So he's standing there. <laughs> we'll get to that. Get to the, yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah. I thought I was dying in that just moment. Just a doctor. But Swaggle's standing up there. He's next to me. Pedro's up there because he's trying to get some pictures while he's up there. And as the introductions are going on, as you know, Team Duke Money's coming out, he says it again. He's like, oh, I should go take potato sh- ref shirt i should go jump potato and take his ref shirt and pedro's like yeah yeah you absolutely should yeah no way you won't do that you've got to do it he goes hold on hold and pedro actually gave him his cue on when to make his move oh great so it was 100 percent pedro egging him on at this point Thank and you, it's pedro. one of my favorite visuals of wrestle rager is while these entrances are going on while steve guy's getting ready to introduce everybody all you see is there's the one side of the ring where there's about a three foot clearance, and we've managed to fit two and a half rows of people yeah. between this guardrail and, and a fence. fence, and you see them gradually parting, and you can just see the top of Swaggle's head working his way <laughs> through the crowd <laughs> to get around the guardrail and get to the ring. And the next thing you know, he's waiting and he's waiting, and he gets his cue and dives in after the potato, takes him down, starts ripping the shirt off of him. For the record. Uh, as uh, as the introductions are happening, I'm using my periffs and I'm seeing Swaggle just hanging out by the table, and he gives me this really awkward head nod, and I'm not sure what to think of it. So as I'm separating, <laughs> it's called the Iggy brother. Yeah, well, <laughs> Iggy that. Uh, as I'm separating the two teams from beating each other to oblivion uh, before the introductions, uh, I then turn my head, and for some reason, I hit the mat. So that's what that's. That's the greatest yeah. thing well, ever. Had. So yeah, Swaggle. That's how you ended up with Swaggle's. The right. It was spur of the moment. I had no idea. And one of my favorite aspects of it is as the match goes on and it gets crazier and crazier and more weapons are piling up, you can see the regret <laughs> forming on Swaggle's face. I like every time he has to make he, a, he, a pin count. He's like very. He's like he uh, knew at some point because he wound up with safety goggles and well, that's, that was the other thing we were laughing about. I was like, I look out at the ring. Jake Clemens has safety glasses and gloves on. Tom Dunn Tom has Dunn. safety glasses on. Potato, nothing. Nope. Ref shirt. That's all he's got. Yet somehow he takes Swaggle takes his ref shirt and ends up with safety glasses and gloves as well. Yeah, I don't know where those where those came from. It, I mean, the whole day. 
Under underrated Sabu moment, by the way, is uh, when Sabu finally came to the real backstage area, and uh, Wes could probably uh, comment on this a little bit. Yeah, so he came by and he's saying what's up to everybody, and then he goes to like cross over yard to yard and just eat shit completely because there's like a fall straight on his face. There's like I a, saw that. That was amazing. Because there's like falls straight on his face, tries to roll out of it, and we're all he just like did looking. like sort of a shoulder roll out of it, and then got up, and like everyone was kind of like. You good? He's okay. <laughs> and like, he like tried to act like it didn't happen. Everyone right. tried to act like it didn't happen. As soon as his back was turned, everyone was like. <laughs> <laughs> because we heard what was going on right before it. And then he comes back and does that. <laughs> yeah, he, All right, he's, like, he's like, what's up in everybody? Yeah, and just eat shit on this fence. <laughs> so to, re- to, get, to go back to what you were talking about with Dr. Dan during the main event. So we're all, like I said, this deck is completely overcrowded. Like, I'm pushing past people so I can see the match to do commentary on it. And Dom and I were doing commentary, and Thorne gets Twan in the ropes, pulls out a fork, and starts stabbing Twan in the head with a fork in the forehead. And we've got Magnum CKs up there with us, uh, Gringo's up there, Dom's up there, Carson's up there, and everybody goes nuts at this point dr dan goes so nuts that he starts jumping up and down he gets about the second jump and you just hear this loud crack and you feel that entire deck bow to the middle i literally lunge forward and grab the railing which by the way i wouldn't trust with my body weight when it was 100 percent stable and my life flashes before my eyes (laughs) Wrestle Rage is wild, man. At which point, the Thrillbilly, initial AIW Absolute Champion, the Thrillbilly was was one of our guests and was yep. up there. His wife was up there. His wife immediately starts berating Dr. Dan. I told you to stop jumping around. I'm getting off this damn thing. Storms <laughs> down the stairs off the balcony or off the deck. Totally mommed him up, huh? <laughs> We had a we had a lot of people, sp- you know, spread throughout. Thrill Billy was there. Superstar Jerry was in the crowd. Uh, Everyone comes out for wrestling. Everybody Rager. comes Papa out for Pepperoni. wrestling. Rager. Papa uh, Pepperoni in the house. Oh yeah. Papa Pepperoni was in the house. <laughs> he said hi to me while well, I'm over there doing stuff. Uh, <laughs> he, he kept thanking me. I don't know what he's thanking me for. I, I he's a nut, man. He out at some point he grabbed like Mansur's head, full of blood, and just grabbed it and wiped it on his face. And we, it, like it was the most disgusting thing I ever seen. I was just like, "Why would you do that?" All all these injuries, or all these all this blood, but there were somehow minimal injuries throughout. They like Alley Cat broke her finger. Alley Cat was the only one that I know of. But yeah, Alley Cat broke her finger, and, and Magnum almost broke his leg. Oh, Mag- I don't somehow, see how Magnum didn't break his somehow leg. Somehow, Jody Fleishing has become a verb in our vocabulary here in AIW, and that happens. Magnum, you know, swinging over the top ropes. Leg crashes on the guardrail, and so he immediately just goes behind me. Oh my god, did he just Jody Fleisch that? And I'm like, oh, that's terrible. <laughs> like, what, what is that? That's Let's become Jody Fleisch's lasting oh, legacy. God, Jody. And I'm like, Jody has done so many more cool things. Why does that have to be it? But I mean, even that still was fun. You have Swaggle chugging Mad Dog oh, in the yeah. ring. Before his match with Dr. Dan, and it, it, underrated classic. That match was fantastic. It really was. It, have you ever thought of Dr. Dan going to like have a classic like that? With Swaggle? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, Swaggle has all sorts of, of fun stuff, but you look, Dr. Dan usually Swaggle just gets is like an un- undercover MVP of a lot of shows. Yeah. Well, I mean, going back to Jay Lid again, him and Magnum CK, that was fantastic. Even though everything leading up to it, it was only a, a six minute match. Uh, I'm trying to think what other wildness happened. Oh, keeping the Barkley Nation away from uh, Eddie Kingston. Oh boy. That was a wonderful task that I had. Hey. But uh, what happened? Hey. Yeah, what happened? Because I, I'm. This is right before uh, our match, and I'm fucking nervous as all hell. Well, so I'm not paying attention to anything. Here's, here's the thing. Did you see this happening uh, during barely, your match? A little barely. bit. I was. Well, first off, during the match, I was pretty focused, but then when I started getting hit with a couple clotheslines and a Saido suplex and this, that, and the other, you know, I was a little, I was a little foggy. What about the shout out to your mom? Multiple times, multiple times. She was standing right. I mean, that fired me up though. She was right, giving it right right back. Yeah, he kept looking over in our direction, yelling. Stole the mic from me uh, (laughs) in my sweet suit, as outfitted by Alex Worldwide Keller. Yeah, props there. Uh, But yeah, Eddie steals the mic from me, goes. Right towards your mother. Yeah. Making inappropriate comments. Mrs. Barkley comes in for one show. 
comes into Russell Rager and she's the target. I mean, you know, I, I, I this is all I want to say about the match is, you know, I knew what I was getting into with Eddie Kingston. He was throwing it. Uh, I'm pretty sure your hand, his hand is still on your chest. Yeah, and this is two weeks out. It's still you can still <laughs> at see least it. at least two weeks out. Oh, your chest. So yeah, he, that, uh, yeah. You know, I I didn't want to say uh, I underestimated him because I knew you know what was going to happen. He's going to be hitting hard and he's stronger and Just bigger like he than didn't me. Hit you with a car. Exactly. I mean, the day after, I felt like I got hit by a car. Shout out to Richie, man. Rest in peace to Richie. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I just got to get to the gym and get training harder. And, and you know, I got to get focused here because I went into that match and I was uh, determined that I would get the win. And I was that close to winning. But, unfortunately, uh, I got backfisted to the future and uh, woke up to you pushing back the Barkley Nation. Yeah. he. Uh, I will tell you this on, on the way there. Yeah. He said to me, oh, I'm going to light him the fuck up. And I was like, oh, this is going to go great. I'm going to chop the shit out of him. I'm like, yep, yep. And your chest looked like if people ever saw that match between like Walter and PCO that was going, everybody was a big fan of, I was like, oh, my God, that's what your chest looks like hey. at that moment. But this is what I'll say about people with the Barkley Nation. Yeah. My man, Wes Barkley, does a great job of telling them, if Steve Guy says something to you, you you listen. Hey, you're the moderator. You're the, the moderator of the sorts. The moment I go over to these guys, when I think like everybody else is thinking they're gonna hop the rails, I got Carson and Dom Green coming to help me, like in Pedro. Oh, they be- Dom. And Dom handed his wallet and stuff to somebody on because he was up on the deck with fucking me. wrestlers want to get. And I I found this right. out the other day. Matt Justice was just in like with a, a hat on, hidden directly behind them. They were all fucking swarming the Barkley Nation. Yeah. So, well, and that man. shouldn't surprise, given Matt Justice's history with brawls in AIW, that doesn't surprise but me. But then I just I just walk up to these guys, and like I just you know throw my hands out, like, hey, let's back up, and then I say something immediately, they go, oh, Steve got, yeah, okay, no, cool, man, all right, all right, we're good. I'm like, you guys got to back it up, like, somebody else is going to come over here, it's going to be all bad news, like, you got to understand that. You know, this is, this is pro wrestling that doesn't, cross over here just it's cool and they're like all right all right cool man we're good we're good and then everybody else running over i was like oh jesus now you guys are gonna fucking incite it i had this thing died down well and and even eddie said he was he was cool he was having because he loves egging people on like that yeah he loved it until he saw one of them kind of grab a bottle like they were getting ready to to use as a weapon he was like listen (laughs) yeah (laughs) that happens and all bets are off just so you know (laughs) yeah yeah i told dude i was like hey you gotta Put the, he's like, I wasn't gonna really throw it. I was just for show. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I kind of figured that, but the rest right. of these guys don't know that. So for sure, that's yeah, that. Put, put that way. down. It, but uh, yeah, props to, to my man Wes because Thanks. he has them. As much as people don't think that, Wes has them well, on lockdown the when they come hey, in. The like, moderator. hey, let yeah. this let this deal. I'm like, ah, cool. When you're wearing that flashy suit too, you know it's it's going down. So well, thank you, appreciate it again. But yeah, I mean, worldwide. Know. Wish I could have pulled off the win, but you know I was pretty close. But now I got to get to the gym, get studying tape, get eating better. You know the Destro diet, oatmeal, 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 and sweet potatoes, and you know this, that, and the other. You got to get training harder. You know, so get that Scotty six chickens. Exactly. Uh, I don't know what else there is to be said about the main event. I mm-hmm. I love the fact that uh, people genuinely were shocked that John Thorne. I was shocked. Came out. You were shocked. I Didn't was know shocked. until the night before. <laughs> I was shocked. He saved me from getting dropped on a ladder. Thank yeah. you, Thor. Yeah, that's true. Uh, uh, I purposely like mingled the entire first half of the show, so I had absolutely no idea what I was walking out into during that match at all. Because <laughs> <laughs> it, it had just... been going a few minutes before you came in. Yeah, yeah. it was. Uh, it was a just a long good. few minutes. It was. Uh... I had a blast, if we're being honest. You end up with stitches. Yeah. I was happier than a pig and shit. I'm right, like, we're two weeks out. Hell, two days out, I was ready to do it all over again. I will will say that, like, uh, I feel that that whole experience, like, reinvented me as a a human being. Uh, Just to know that I could do it and uh, nothing bad happened. Yeah. Because uh, I've been kind of living in fear since I had pneumonia for like months and months and months. And it's kind of been like a kind of been like a slave to it. Uh, so I was always like kind of like, I don't know, almost like demasculated or something. Because I was like just always so scared of uh, what was going to happen or whatever. And then, uh, I don't know, that Friday night before I was like, fuck it, I'm going to do this. And uh, I did it and it went pretty well. And uh, 
I feel like uh, I've been reborn again as like a regular human being. Like I can finally put the, the pneumonia craziness behind me. What about old PME over there? I was baptized in blood. So, sounds like you were uh, ready to die, as Eric Ryan has taught us at the AIW Academy. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ready to die, but... That's the hashtag I, ready to die tour. That's I was ready to... Uh, I don't know. I was just I just went went out there ready to do it. Trust me, everybody wanted to get their hands on Duke, even you. That's why you jo- joined us. I was, uh, I was just saying... I was... And, <laughs> I didn't know Hornswoggle was the referee. Nobody knew. And uh, so that throws me off when I'm out there. And uh, I fucking, he's like <laughs> giving me like, he's like trying to hype me up and get me hyped up when I'm in there. And he's like, like, I don't know, like almost like coaching me or something like. <laughs> He's like, you're doing good. You're doing great. Yeah, keep yeah, doing that. And yeah, I'm, you rubbed my head at one point. I'm like, you're good. You're good. I'm okay. And at, <laughs> at one point, Parker Pierce fucking clobbers me like with a lariat to the back of the head. Like just fucking, fucking it destroys me. Well, his brains might have been fried because earlier on in that match, I fucking brained him with that goddamn uh, water fountain uh, bottle cap thing. Oh. Like two or three times to the point that he gave me a look like motherfucker, and then I just started gouging. But yeah, I just went to fucking war on his skull, dude. I, he hit me so hard from behind, like, and I'm like, I go down, and Swaggle starts giving me like a fucking CTE test, <laughs> and he was like, "How many fingers am I holding up? What's the venue?" I said, "Right now, that's class." He said, "What just happened to you?" I said, "Parker Pierce hit me really fucking hard." And he's like. <laughs> He's like, where are you? I said, we're at Russell Ranger 3, man. He goes, he goes, are you all right? I said, yeah, I'm just ready to get this the fuck over with. I'm fine. Let's go. Get the fuck out of the way. That's where the fuck I was at outside, fucking when I was, like, bleeding out my whole life out of me through my fucking forearms. Though, luckily, Jake Clemens on top of it. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, in, retro- in retrospect, there's probably so many things that I could have did better, but I didn't care because I was just, like, living it. It was, I mean... So many people came away from that thing just with their minds blown. I mean, maybe it'll translate to DVD. Maybe it won't. I hope it will. I think it will. Live, it was insane. That was a live experience for sure. The one thing that was mind-boggling to me was I'm watching four men get into this ring, each holding a light tube and having a four-way standoff. In my mind, this can only end badly. An entire crowd, two feet from the ring, are just like, oh, shit, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. All wide-eyed. And I'm just picturing shards of glass going into those eyes that are wide open in excitement. And I'm, I just immediately That's why those disclaimers are up, like, brother. back the fuck up. Everybody, back the fuck up. Rest and then next baby. thing I know, glass everywhere. And I'm like throwing out that sweet suit jacket to shield the entire crowd. It's kind of like the Batman. Oh, that, was definitely, that was definitely a thought in my mind. I, I saved everybody. As soon as I like hit it the first time, I was like, oh, a lot of that went in the front row. That's fine. Whatever. Fucking grab another. <laughs> I, well, I definitely and I'll got give you guys, I will give you guys credit. My first thought when I saw you lining up is they're going to they're gonna fucking lightsaber fight with these things and people are going to die because yeah. that glass is going everywhere when it explodes. <laughs> I will say when whenever it was, you know, I didn't even know when I was coming out cuz I was hiding cuz like there wasn't like there was a locker room, you know what right. I mean? So like I was dressed and I was hiding behind the U-Haul and I had no idea how long I was going to have to wait before I came out and it felt like fucking forever. It was like forever and then when uh, I finally heard my music, I was like, I wasn't nervous at all. And I fucking, when I came out, I, I stared at Duke and the place was going crazy. That, like, that slowed down in my brain. And it felt like, that moment felt like it lasted for fucking 20 minutes. I'll tell you, the, the picture that exists, that uh, you posted, I don't remember who took it. Was that Michelle, maybe? Our yeah, I fan? think so. And uh, it's you holding that guitar staring down the duke you know it's from behind you and there's duke in the ring and i told you i'm like man that's like that's one of the most iconic mm-hmm. awesome like pictures like in aiw like that's it we, that that we felt like build up this story and that felt like forever because it's like <laughs> and like uh it took a little bit of time for like the reaction to go around yeah and like adam laporta like crowd surfed his way to the fucking front and he was like <laughs> 
fucking yeah, he's like falling over. There's like a picture. He's like almost falling over the barricade. He's like losing his mind. And uh, I was like, well, it doesn't matter what happens after this. You know what I mean? Like it could all go bad. It doesn't matter. It's like it's already it's already served its purpose at this point. This is the moment we came to. Uh, poor Marino did take a uh, big Tuan spear to a table. He he speared the soul right out of me. <laughs> not not too many good vibes during that, huh, buddy? No, definitely not, dude. I'm telling you, Parker Pierce, fucking, he fucking, he about took my head off, legit. Like, and he gave you that DVD. The, uh, yeah, and then he they, like the clothesline, and then he DVDs me on the fucking tubes, and uh, then I get another fucking CTE test from fucking Hornswoggle, and I'm like, dude, just please leave me alone. I'm trying to re- fucking focus right now, and it's. Uh, Try focusing when you're looking up at a midget referee in a referee shirt with safety goggles on, like asking you how many fingers he's holding up. That is the perfect way to not be able to focus on anything. Uh, a lot of people are big fans of Parker Pierce's shirt, though. It's Pledge Week, bitches. I it's was. I admit it. I, that, that one got that me. Got you, I was huh? sitting up between that and when they came out, and I I can't remember who it was, but somebody on that deck said, "Oh, Tuan went full dusty for this." <laughs> Dude, Twan popped that top off. He ripped that shirt off. Twan was feeling it. Yeah, uh, he felt at Marino's right. expense. He felt that, Dude, uh, I I put that I put that fork in my boot, not knowing what I was gonna do with it. I just knew that I was gonna need it at one point. And man, <laughs> Twan, Twan was the first guy to he was the first guy to, that I saw, and he got it. Uh, Stay woke, Twan. I got to see the first stab, and then. The whole deck almost came crashing down, so I missed the rest of it after that. He got a couple. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't know if I drew blood, but I was trying. It says something when uh, Eric Ryan is on this card, and that was like one of the tamer matches somehow. Yeah, he it was, was told it, not to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that was very difficult for him. Oh yeah, he kept walking around by all this stuff and just looking at it. No, I told him to use whatever he wanted. Oh. I said, please use that razor blade board because we're not going to use it. Yeah, that Should disappeared. Be. No one got to use that. Yeah, yeah Should have used that hula hoop. Mancer, a big fan I of the, the uh, cheese grater. What happened to the hula hoop, Worldwide? It ended up in the dumpster, but I was ready to take that hula hoop. I was ready to dish out the punishment with that hula hoop. I was ready to do some work with that I kept trying to. Hoop. I kept trying to call uh, Jock jamming it down over a weird body and trying to spin it. Oh. Well, I heard from multiple friends that uh, they claim that Forever burned in their the back of their eyes is just weird body getting spun around. Oh and God, like that was, I forgot about that moment. Just that was katana brutal. Slashed with goddamn uh, fucking light, light tubes. tubes. Yeah, we went in. We went. In. We went out. Good vibes. And uh, you know, uh, you. it's uh, like I said. It made me uh, strangely. It made me feel like uh, like a regular human again. I don't know why that would make somebody feel normal, but I don't know about a class war, but it was a war. That's for sure. I definitely have a newfound respect for, uh, those who can do matches like that more often. Uh, never thought we'd be in one. We were and staring at this Terry Funk vinyl has me <laughs> respecting him a whole hell of a lot more than I already did. Well, And that was the thing that really sucked was like, there were so many different instances where glass was involved with other people that maybe, the other people in the match didn't know, like nobody realized it, but like you could not avoid getting cut by the glass and the thumbtacks. If you were in the ring, you yeah. were Yo, that ring was littered with it. At one point, somebody went for a pinfall and Swaggle looked at us and was like, I, uh, Yeah, yeah, it just didn't just count. Clapped. It. Dude, it was, it just kicked out. And me being, you know, the uh, not active pro wrestler that I was, I had no knee pads or anything. Like, so I was like, fuck. Like, everything. Like, my legs were all cut up. My fucking hands were all cut up. Uh, I was looking like a mess when I had to go to a family brunch on Sunday. I'll tell you that. (laughs) After the match, uh, we were in the back, and at one point they had uh, pinched out at least like an inch and a half to two inches of glass. Just pinched it out like a pimple right out of my back. Yeah, shout shout out to Jeremy and Chandler Bingham's mom, uh, because... Uh, that was the first deathmatch experience I ever had where there was a full EMT staff backstage to fucking check check on everybody. Because well, I think we had like three or four different people running at one point. Uh, but uh, every time I ever did it, yeah. back back in the day, I just, you know, I just went home and took a shower. <laughs> I just went home. You, we, the, yeah, definitely would have been a blue boy. the students were trying to uh, sweep off that canvas after the show. And finally, I just got in there. I was like... Fuck this, dude. I was like, no, dude, this is going to take forever. Here's what we're going to do. You guys help me. We're going to fold it up. We're going to drag it over to the edge, and then we're just 
going to let it all drop down, essentially, and shake it to right there. There was so much glass. I would not be surprised if we had a line that was, like, the length or width of the ring and was probably two inches thick of glass just left from you guys at the end there when we when we did that. I will say that there was a lot of good a lot of good pictures taken though. Yeah. Very good pictures. Props to all of you. I can't wait to see the artsy ones. I was saying we haven't even seen all of them yet. Those were just like kind of the candid. Yeah. Uh Pedro had a camera. Uh Ed Betts had a camera. And a lot of fans. A lot of those pictures coming out, you know, that were, have been seen or were just taken by fans. Uh so but yeah, it was like it, like that was another thing that was distracting because those artsy photographers were there and like I remember I got like hit with something like I think Mance like broke this baseball bat light tube bat on me or something and I'm like laying on the concrete and they had like some like kind of like old timey like flash or something. It, it goes away from the camera so that the lighting can hit you from there. And this lady was in my yeah. this lady was in my face with this like flash <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like they were there was so much going on between Swaggle and these photographers. Like I was like, they came to me. I was rattled, man. I was rattled. Yeah, that was Doctor Dan's fireball. Yeah, I was rattled. They dude. came to me and they were like, they're like, okay, you told us that this was gonna be wild. I'm like, yeah, I told you guys it's gonna be wild. Like, oh, we underestimated what you meant by that. I'm like, I told you many times. <laughs> like, and I'm like, you guys get the hell away. I'm like, get close, but then don't get that close. Not in this one. Uh, it was uh, the whole thing was nuts. And then somehow we were supposed to do an after party. Two. It didn't go too well. One house. That did not go well. I know uh, my people that were in my car wanted to just go back to my house and sleep, and we had an ongoing conversation of not going to the after party. Yeah, like it was a long, it was a long day. It was never a question in my heart whether or not I was was going to go to the after party, but there was definitely a point in time around eleven o'clock where I was like, where you were still bleeding really bad. No, no, I had that mostly uh, sealed up. But, um, well, no, it was definitely still bleeding. But um, there was definitely a point around 11 where I was like, I might not make it to bar close. But then I rallied and uh, drank a glass of water, the first one in probably about five, six, seven hours. And because, uh, who me and Swaggle ordered some waters and it made me feel so good <laughs> that we just kept ordering waters. I was like on light beers because I definitely had lost a little bit of blood because I like had a shot a bit at of blood? the bar afterwards and like I like was like dizzy as hell and I was like, yeah, we're gonna keep it to light beers. I uh, I will uh, I'll throw this out here because we give him so much shit for being drunk when we talk about this podcast. Uh, it was Steve Guy's turn to be an asshole because this day was too much drinking. I was with Swaggle. And uh, a lot of stress for me that week. I think I got collectively like three hours of sleep every single day, and that's all. That was the most. I was on three and a half hours of sleep for that day. Yeah. 8.30 in the morning. We were drinking at the show, at and then we were drinking this after party, and, uh, and it was time to leave. And essentially, I thought that Swag was being an asshole to me, and he wasn't. And I decided I had taken enough shit that week in general. And I fucking pulled my car up, and I took his luggage out of my car, and I put it on the side of the street as you find your way fucking home. And it was it was all bad. And he I found was, his way into my car. He found his way into his giant, Old White's car. He has two bags. One of them the one half is the size of them. The other one twice the size of them. <laughs> That's the merch bag. <laughs> Incidentally, my trunk, full of shit. Just full of dumb shit. So, mind you, I also already have three other people besides myself in my car. So now I have four and a half people, plus two goddamn bags. And we're circling the block looking for Steve Guy's house because I don't remember exactly where it is. And the whole time I'm just like, Swoggle, you're a fucking millionaire. If I get a goddamn DUI, you are paying for everything. Everything! Uh, and eventually we got him dropped off. But Yeah, I apologize to him. And then the after-party after, after party did continue for I, 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 a pitiful this, two this, more hours. This was the earliest uh, exit I've ever made in the history of the AW after party. It was wild. It was hot and heavy, and then around 11, 30, 12, the place just emptied the fucking Yeah, I, 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 I fucking I ghosted out of there about 11, 30, after uh, Britt Baker ordered uh, four different orders of French fries from four different restaurants on Uber Eats. Oh, that's right. I stole some uh, stole some of her French fries, and uh, I just Whoa. Houdini'd right out of there. She, why was she getting all those different fries? She did it all by accident. She just really wanted fries and accidentally ordered them um, all. <laughs> I think it was like some from McDonald's. 
And yeah, some from Morales, like local, like maybe? no, just like some weird Yuzu, maybe or no, just some like weird local restaurant. I don't know. She didn't even know. That's yeah. Yuzu. I mean, I know. Yeah, Yuzu my one might have like been Yuzu. Ass, yeah. Uh, and they just yeah, it was a whole bunch of them. Yeah, I didn't she eat just food until the fries. next day. I like dropped like fifteen pounds in twenty four hours. There was a whole bunch of shit. We had to stop at Burger King before the after party. I felt that like was our deal. How we I there. felt awful though the next day. I will I felt say that pretty good. I woke up, went to the hospital, got stitched up, got some Chinese buffet. I felt like the, went to like, the uh, pharmacy, dropped off for prescription for my antibiotics, got myself a Bloody Mary at the bar next door, then picked up my antibiotics. There was home, a, took a nap. There was a point in time. Uh, Sunday, where I strongly con- like, I strongly considered the possibility that Parker Pierce might have broken one of my vertebrae with that lariat. <laughs> I had to because I could I could not lift my head up off the pillow. Like my I could not lift my head like He's at a strong all. Strong boy. Uh, yeah, he got me, man. He was he was that coll- he was a collegiate pitcher. That lariat's That's no true. joke. That's a strong lariat. I was uh I was sore the next day because I in that moment knew that I was an asshole to swaggle, and I felt so bad when I got home that. Uh, like even though the couch was open because Eddie and, and Josh left to take Eddie to the airport at like 5 a.m. I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to try to, you know, live up to my apology. And I laid on my hardwood floor next to him like we had a camp out like we we're little school graders. <laughs> oh, my God. And I was like, Jesus, that hurts. Not good. I don't know how anybody could ever do that. But uh, that was, that's about it. What's that? I said, I'm glad he didn't call me. I wasn't trying to deal with his bags at all my stairs. It was a lot. It was a lot. Well, that's it. I mean, Wrestle Rager lived up to the hype. We didn't talk. I, we barely talked about any of the matches, but they were all pretty good. Buy the fucking DVD. Is is the show well, really about the matches? And that's the thing. Is we always say, oh, it's it's the live experience. Live, you get a total different experience if it's a live experience. Even if you enjoy the DVDs, you got to get out to. If there is any show all year that that's true of. It's Wrestle Rager. It's definitely a whole other animal. I don't know how this show translates to DVD or streaming, but being there live is insane. It's so ridiculous. Two years running now. Like it's not an urban legend. It's not hype. It is just an insane atmosphere. Yeah. I I don't know where what we do next year. Five hours. Five hours. Yeah. We got to bump it up another hour. Yeah, we already we three fought hours. The, we went four hours. We already Five fought hours. the weather this year. <sighs> Might have to have different location. Yeah, I don't we, know. We what could, ECW original do we uh, tap into? I don't know. This is. Uh, we got to see who's alive in May. Are we? Are we'll we too big? Out. Are we too big for class now? Can't be. No. I mean, if anything, not like year. not as a promotion, but I mean as people. <laughs> People watch. Unfortunately, unfortunately, you might have to up the ticket prices to keep it at the where it's at because we're rapidly outgrowing now. That's class. Well, let me tell you something. Like there are like multiple people where that was their first show they ever went to, and they were all coming up to me just raving like, "When's your next show? What?" And they're, I'm like, it's not always like this. Like you know, sit in a church gym, you can still drink and shit. It's fine. But they're like, I don't give a shit. That was awesome. That was amazing. I want to fucking go. I know, it's the best gotta, twenty dollars I've spent guys, in living memory. You gotta say it's always like that, man. Come on. Well, yeah. What kind of promoter are you? You guys thought that my. Well, yeah. I'm just saying it's not gonna be him. goddamn outside. Don't try to talk them down from well, going to no, other shows. No, 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 no. You guys thought my idea of bleachers in the neighbor's yard was ridiculous for this year. That might have to be a thing. Oh you know, yeah, we didn't even mention the fireworks at the end oh, of our yeah. match. Oh, Felt like the big dog, Roman Reigns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bell rings were all taken, you know, a bow, and then just fucking fireworks. I made you motherfuckers do that curtain call. You guys were running to the back. Yeah, well, yeah. Sure, sure this is did. true. So get the I fuck back here. I did see that. I get back. Thanks for that. And thank I, you for the fireworks. I should have got a promo, but, you know, those fireworks went off, and I just felt like the big dog. No, that's, that's the end awesome. of it. That's all we needed to do. I almost took one vile bump in the ring, but I decided against it. So, so what do we do? We tell stories. Thanks to Paul from Now This Class, PBR, all the people that came. Yes. Um, Lotus Screen Printing, yeah. who did our lovely event shirts. And a uh, quick shout out to Caden. This is his last show for a, a year. really long time. At least a year. Style, man. At yeah. least a year. Shout out to Dave the Potato for Don West in the, the merch. And, and taking care, care of Sabu. Sabu. Even though he got two punch cards on his McCafe card That's for right. it. Got free free coffee out of it. And shout out to PME for uh, passing those good vibes with uh, Sabu. I just want to say sorry to Biggin's mom. She yells at me and Marino Every time we tell her we're about to do something like this, what did you say last year? Sorry, <laughs> that, 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 like she oh, yelled at She, as, she as yelled as at like, me. She yelled at me too. She goes, 
So, like, what kind of weapons are they going to use? Like, stuffed animals? And I said, oh, no. <laughs> nope. I said, it's more going to be, like, glass and barbed wire and sharp objects. I said, what, you know, I don't know. She's like, what's wrong with you? I was like, I have no clue. They just booked me. <laughs> so, until, uh, until next year, Russell Rager 4, a thirst for more. Uh, Russell Rager hey. 4, evacuate the dance floor. Hey. Uh, <laughs> what are the no, not the well, for... PME for Wes Barkley, for Day the Potato, for President Matt Wadsworth, for Alex Worldwide Keller, and AIW owner John Thorne. My name is Steve Guy. We'll talk to you next week right here on The Card is Going to Change.